Hey, hey, you! No, 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 down here, down here. Hey, we got the 5,000 likes, so we're continuing our Ottoman campaign, and we're gonna be absolutely schnippeldorping everybody around us, showing how ridiculously powerful this nation became with the Domination DLC. Also, if we get another 5,000 likes on this video, in the first week, we're gonna do a Byzantium run, in which we're gonna be owning all of the Ottoman lands in just the first 30 years. I'm talking both Balkan and all Anatolian lands with a brand new insane strategy that I think a lot of you are really gonna enjoy. And a friendly reminder, if you ever wanna get any Paradox games, you can use my Nexus, link in the description. You have all the Paradox games you can ever imagine and I get a commission for all of this, so you would be helping out so much because all of the money that I'll be getting from this will be going towards helping poor Romanian people living in Japan so yeah, that's right, it's going to me. You got a problem with that? To get a situation of uh, what exactly is happening here, if you haven't seen the previous part, which also you'll find a link to in the description, alongside the estates video, which is also very important for 135, because the meta has changed a lot. We've basically snaked all the way from Granada, which is one of our vassals here that we're in the process of integrating. We have an Eyalet in Hungary, an Eyalet in Tunisia, Eyalet in uh, the Egyptian lands, and we're in the process of attacking Karakoyunlu and wiping them out essentially in a couple of years once the truce is over and then we'll be snaking our way into the big juicy timurids which surprisingly did not collapse but instead thrived in this particular campaign and yes boys it is only 1477 that's right we will be using the alet mechanic of course to make as many alets in europe but before we get there let's uh finish off this war against Slemchen and tugurt i've also taken the one percent the burger loan so i can pay the four percenter here and so i can also upgrade my monument in athena that is right the parthenon is the best monument in athena also the only monument in athena which kind of makes it the best but hey it gives up to 20 percent advisor cost reduction and corruption reduction so it's not too bad one more thing is that i've given out a lot of janissary privileges in the first part of this campaign for two reasons because i want to show you what it's like to have to go through a janissary disaster and how to handle your decadence because i know a lot of people are struggling with that and i've read your comments i know a lot of you want to know how to manage that we'll show a little bit of that in this particular campaign so pay close attention we also managed to get 50 of our provinces with a pasha in them so we can do this mission which reduces the minimum local autonomy to plus 10 there you go it was i think 20 or 25 and now it's lowered to 10 which is a lot better because we still get the benefits from having this as a pasha league namely state maintenance monthly autonomy change province governing costs as well as tolerance of heathens plus 10 which is huge because it essentially means we're not going to get any rebellions in heathen provinces as long as we have that pasha league enacted so it's a small price to pay 10 percent autonomy for not having to deal with rebels at all let's do our mission we just need to upgrade this one more time there you go now we got that one done and that means we can do the fate of the patriarchate now as well let's go ski this is going to give us a greek theologian or whatever you call him that is plus three so only two ducats oh my god that is insanely cheap right now so let's upgrade this guy to level five we're getting 18 admin per month that is just insane man that is actually freaking insane <laughs> same for this guy actually we can upgrade him a few times once we get the money we'll upgrade him another time we'll make him all level five i guess uh, except the uh, military one unless we have a military cheaper advisor i do not think we do no let's also recruit a few more units we're gonna need these guys for the war against uh, karako yunlu our various subjects are super loyal right now so we don't need to worry about them too much i need to wait for one more year before i can start integrating my uh, first ai I cannot directly take these lands because they're disconnected from my lands, but by doing a five head move here I'm gonna be seizing lands from the Tunisians namely the province of Gadamis Which is a small price to pay because now I can actually annex all of Tugurt also So I don't need to worry about these guys in the future surprisingly not that many nations in any sort of a potential coalition against us And look how beautiful the Maghreb is now We just got to get rid of whatever's left in Morocco here and of course the Castilians which surprisingly managed to snake their way around North Africa we also can do the Algerian Corsairs now that grants us some naval tradition and a ton of permanent claims all around uh, the southern tips here of the Iberian Peninsula and most of Morocco really. It's almost as if the game is telling us to restore the Roman Empire, isn't it? And check out how cheap it is to actually core stuff, boys. <laughs> We're getting a 39.4% reduction in coring costs. One day and the truce is over, as predicted, you know, I know how to read uh 
I know how to read Diplo screens so I can predict the future clearly. Now we're gonna set up a Marden over here as the war target and let's Gloglos, Attackius Maximus, Conquerius, Destroyus, Stelius, their China Warius. Oh wow, Samskin wants to offer me Condotary for free. I mean, they hate Karako Inlu so much they're willing to give me their only 3,000 boyos here to help out. I'm gonna accept it, Samski. I'm gonna be forgiving with you. I totally would not destroy you right after this war, I promise. Oh, Chunek Kaimak, the the drill master. Oh, this is the drill master event. 10 discipline or 50 prestige or one stability. Okay, I'm gonna go for the stability, thank you. We already have 100 prestige boyos. Prospering times. Let's see which city was uh, selected. Tadmore, the most insignificant of cities. Are you serious right now? At least it's a livestock city, so we can go for the uh, rural one, which grants us a lot of extra manpower in this once we build the soldier's household. And I do have to say, I absolutely adore the uh, siege ability that the, um, what the schnapps is this? You want me to release Algiers as an ailet. No, I'm not gonna do that. Thank you for the admin points though. So I'm not doing that because I already have way too many ailets in this particular area. I want to have some lands directly owned by me also. You know what I'm saying here, boys? But yeah, as I was uh, trying to say, we are getting sieges super freaking fast. I mean, I'm sieging stuff faster than I can even spot my units sieging them down. I mean, I'm literally just looking the other way and then I turn back. And oh, 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 actually, oh, oh, <laughs> I didn't... I Seriously, I didn't actually plan this, but you saw that cars got sieged just as I looked the other way I'm telling you the Ottomans are ridiculously broken boys. Okay, so in order to do this mission We need these provinces highlighted or eight within these provinces. I feel like this is enough 150 and coalition wise Nobody gives a schnapps of course plus if I'm a little bit lucky. I am <laughs> Look at that look at that they're gonna join in a war against me again. Oh my god, you dumb dumbs. You actual freaking dumb dumbs, bro. I'm gonna completely wipe out their nation, I swear. <laughs> I love the AI sometimes. I believe the best thing to do now is to just take the money from them and pretty much leave them alone. If I take any provinces now, it wouldn't be the smartest choice. So yeah, war reps, money, and that's pretty much it. Nothing else. I'm guessing Timurids are gonna attack them. They haven't yet, but most likely they will attack them in the nearby future, so. And look, boys, we got a pretty good opportunity to take care of Theodoro and uh, Cyprus since the Muscovites are for some reason not helping. For some reason, they got a frack ton of debt over there. Hell yeah! Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> Can you imagine if in the future Cyprus becomes independent and then the Greek Cypriots and the Turkic Cypriots are gonna fight each other? That's totally not a scenario that's gonna happen, right guys? <laughs> Right, right, guys? Truly one of the most cursed things you can ever see in you for is this beloved alliance here. France, Ottomans, together forever, bestest and bestest of friends. <laughs> and the French got really good RNG too. They got all the cores that they needed and they took them over from the Bretonians or Bretons really because Burgundians have been inherited by the Bretonians. Boys, I have an issue with this, right? So I can release the uh, Eyalet of Al-Andalus and it tells me that Andalusia is gonna get a core, not a claim, a core, on the entirety of the Iberian region. They're also gonna be a regular Eyalet, tier 1 Eyalet, government reform, etc, etc. But let's check it out. Relicius Maximus and what happens is they do not get any core on the entirety of Iberia. Pretty sure this is broken. It's not supposed to be like this or maybe I'm doing something wrong. I really don't know but i'm gonna alt it for my game because practice bro not not gonna it's literally just bait like this quite literally without the course it's pointless it's like what what is the reason for me to release this then oh no abba unzi my game randomly crashed oh oh how unfortunate so yeah screw andalusia because i want my admin points if i'm not getting my cores on this i think we're pretty set now all of our armies are ready to march right into the castilian lands we're gonna be cobladrating marrakesh tafilal portugal and every single one of you bastards that have not subscribed yet that's right i'm gonna gonna cobbledrate you i'm coming for you right now you got about five seconds to hit that button before i click cobbledrate on your bottom boys of course we're gonna promise uh france some lands that we're totally gonna deliver uh, sure sure of course guys i i will definitely deliver them land i mean come on bro when have i ever said i'll deliver land and not deliver land to my 
to my allies. Just don't check any of my previous videos, please. Then let's let's, let's move on here. It's funny how Otomania Otomania rules the waves. I have to say, I really enjoy the sprites as well that they added in for the turkeys, for the turkeys, for the for the auto bros. Oh, this is delicious, boys. Portugal and Castile are focusing on France rather than focusing on me. Makes sense because usually the AI focuses on the weaker of nations. In this case, obviously being the French. By the way, in case you were wondering, my uh. uh Oh, oh, what? Come on, really, Pope? A crusade against me? I haven't done anything wrong, all right? Why you gotta do this, bro? I've only been peaceful this entire run. But yeah, I was gonna say, uh, in case you're wondering, my, uh, my American viewers, this historically happened. The Ottomans sieged down Toledo in, um, in the year of our Lord, 2154. So, um, so there you go. It's a free history lesson right there. It's, uh, just, uh, make sure you don't look this up. Trust me on this, okay? Also think it's about time that we start our golden era to make everything a little bit uh, smoother and faster, let's say. Oh, the big coalition of the Castellon and Truppenstein. Oh, nine. What are we going to do? Oh, wow, they actually have more morale than me. What? Oh, they got the last jousting tournament, Crusade, Papal Blessing. Right, okay, that makes sense, I guess. I'm not gonna let these guys take uh, Fez. It took me a while to take it, so I'm not gonna give it up so easily, man. Let's crush them. Kill off all of these bodies. Bastards, please. Oh, they're getting some reinforcements. Hopefully, we managed to take out that army before the reinforcements arrive. We did. And now the reinforcements are movement lock. Oh, wait, what? They're going to Tafilalt. They're retreating? You wussies. Wow. Okay, well, I guess we're going to have to take the fort in Tangiers next. Feel like it's time to peace out some of these guys. I'm going to go with the Portuguese first, taking all their money. I'm also taking some of their southern possessions here. I want to make them a little bit smaller. If I'm going to make them into an ALA later down the line, I need to make them 150 dev or less so I can basically make them into an ALA. And I'm gonna be disbanding both of these mercenary companies as soon as I uh, finish this war. I'm gonna recruit two more standard armies in exchange because I have a lot of manpower. I'm already at max manpower. I'm not even losing too many units, so pointless for me to have mercenaries, which are way more expensive now on par when compared to the regular units. Might as well just have regular unit armies, right? Marrakesh is gonna get off easily this time because I only want the northern provinces from them. I'm probably gonna turn them into an Aelid or maybe release Morocco and feed the rest to this. I don't know just yet. I'll figure it out later down the line, I guess. Still a little bit of persuasion. Even the British are willing to give us some money. 300. How much am I getting from that? 127. Not bad considering that all of the work in the British stuff has been done by the French. I didn't do a single thing there, so I'm happy with the results. Oh, uh, apparently we can release Morocco as an ALET and they obviously will have the cores that they start with. In that case, let me cancel all of these that I started coring up myself since we don't need that then as cores and let's make ALET of Morocco. Oh, wait, no, no, this was actually not a part of, oh, I'm such an idiot. All right, well, at least now we got Morocco, so once the truce is over with these two nations, we can basically get all of that stuff for ourselves. In that case, I'm not going to vassalize uh, Tafilalt. Instead, I'm just going to make them cancel some cores, and that's about it, basically. Small things here and there, so I can attack them as soon as possible afterwards. And hey, they've got the Barbary ALED, so they can still raid the coastlines. That is nice. Destroy those economies of the Christians, right? Fun fact, fact, uh, the Barbary pirates were the biggest slaving countries in the world. I wouldn't call them countries, though. Well, technically, they were kind of countries, right? They were sort of countries. The point is that um, the Barbary pirates managed to get two times more slaves than the Americans managed to get into the New World, which is insane when you think about it. And this is predominantly slaves from the Mediterranean, especially ginger people were some of their favorites. Now, I'm not saying that I'm not gonna give anything to the French. I did promise that I will give them stuff. Oh, that's a that's a cute little coalition there. So yeah, I mean, I obviously will give them something, right? Uh, it's not as if I- Oh! Oh no! Oh, I clicked by mistake! Oh no! I was going to give them parts of the north. Oh, this is horrible. Uh, what can I- Well, I mean, it's too late now, you know? Uh, I, I wish I- Oh, I, I, I feel so bad. I didn't give them anything. Oh, please, France, I'm sorry. Forgiveth me, for I have sinned. So anyway, now we can focus on the conquest of the Timurids, boys. Plus, we can do the Eyalet de Valandalus, which gives us war score versus other religions. Minus five. It's a pretty big one, boys. We're gonna take 5% more lands, basically, from other religious countries. Other religion countries. I would say that my job is finished in the West now until I'm over with, uh, with the conquest into the East. I will finish off the Moroccans. Probably gonna make all of Iberia into uh, various Eyalets. That's pretty much it. I'm not going for the Roman Empire restoration in this particular run, because I want to do 
before 1500 and that's a pretty different tactic when trying to go for that before 1500 so I want to do that in a live stream because we did get the second like goal on the first video where I said if we get 10k likes then I'll do it live so I am a man of my word you'll see the live stream on YouTube soon no worry actually let's cancel this core here so we can give Tetuan back to um to our vassal the Eyalet of Alfaslu wait I gotta be at peace to grant them never mind I'll be back. Also going to recruit that second army I was talking about in uh, the homelands of uh, Anatolia. Oh, look at that. Castile just discovered El Dorado. In Europe, they're getting their asses kicked by us. But in uh, in the New World, they're probably kicking some natives ass. So in my opinion, Castile is the bad guy here, guys. I'm just going to go ahead and say they are definitely the bad guy. And we're just trying to stop them, all right? That's why we attacked them in the first place. Because it's just one of the things that good guys do you know oh boys is the arabian continent gonna be unified yes yes it is it's gonna be unified by my uh by my medinan boyos here let's go ahead and get a yas queen first it's gonna start a little bit of a trend of uh coalition in this area too which is why i'm gonna be attacking the only nation left in this area that could actually join in a coalition against us namely uh the timurids i'm gonna attack them right now let's go with the attackiest maximum Sh set the province of uh, shat yourself <laughs> As the war target, and else let's destroy them. Let's let's absolutely obliterate them, boys. Let's make them learn their place, shall we? How dare you join a coalition which you haven't yet joined? But I know you would after I take over all of the Arabian with my peace deals. So you be quiet, Timurids. It's all your fault. And now let's do the peace deals. Uh, Yas one, Mara two, and I am aware that they still have one province over here. I just cannot reach this, so I'm not going to bother with it as consequence. I'm taking this one as well, so I can actually annex the other provinces in Miklaf, which I cannot until. I take those provinces so it's kind of the main reason I attacked all of these boys in the first place to be honest I blame Mikla for everything bad that happened in this playthrough for them ah uh, what a beautiful Medina it's also fitting man like the holy city of Medina owning the entirety of the Arabian Peninsula well most of it I'll deal with these guys in a few moments finally we've also converted the province of Baghdad which means we can do seize the caliphate mission that allows us to go down the legalism path or the mysticism path and I'm going to show you guys what exactly both of these paths uh, give you by doing the good old um, Crashius Gamius Maximus. So now if we choose the uh, legalism path, we have Embrace Legalism that gives us until the end of the game Ulema Max Privileges plus one and it can get upgraded by uh, later missions. Moss for the Empire gives uh, Reform Progress plus 15% and Codifying the Fic will give 25% Manpower and True Faith Provinces, Global Sailors and Production Efficiency for Vassals, Marches and ALETs once we embrace this particular government reform for tier 4 as well as a ton of amazing modifiers look at all that schnapps over there reform progress tolerance of the true faith privileges extra missionary strength ulema loyalty equilibrium now it's rolling back time obviously if we go down the mysticism path this is what we get boys embrace mysticism gives again the same demi privileges this time not the ulema one tolerance of heathens and max privileges for demi and the last one gives us the sufism decree government reform that allows us to establish holy orders, namely the Mevlevi holy order for us as Sunni. Ibadi have two holy orders, they can choose between both of those, while Sunni and Shia can only have one or the other. And we also get an extra diplomat, demi loyalty equilibrium, max privileges, tolerance of heathens, and so on. It's a little bit of uh, I don't know, I got mixed feelings. I like both, to be honest, guys. I do feel like the reform progress growth is slightly stronger, but I'm gonna keep this one because I want to get the holy orders. It's it's a cool little niche thing that I can do as the Ottomans as a Sunni nation, so why not do it, right? My troops are going like a knife through butter in the uh, Timurid lands. We crushed their soldiers already, and they still managed to recruit 54,000. They basically went through all of their manpower pool, but they are losing significantly. They are military tech 5, and we are military tech 8. They don't even have cavalry units. Quite literally, 10,000 of my units can stack wipe 15,000 of theirs. It's that strong, the difference. They're basically just just hiding from my armies at this point. They say that we are a multicultural society today, but what's more multicultural than Afghanistani troops sieging down a Serbian town that's a part of a Turkish Ottoman Empire in 1492? I mean, it doesn't get any more multicultural than that. In fact, these Afghan
Afghanis are a part of the Timurids, which again, we spread the multiculturalism, boys. I'm, I'm trying to illustrate that we're not as advanced in modern times as you might think we are compared to how advanced we used to be back in the day, you know? Or maybe, maybe I'm just trolling. That could also be a thing. I could also just be trolling. Who's to say nobody's ever gonna know? Let's test out the army difference, shall we? We're attacking these guys in a mountain province, and we attack with 2,000, trickled in a few units, and we managed to still stack wipe them because of the insane army difference. Three technology levels is huge, especially from five to eight. Oh, I didn't pay attention to India. Hot damn, boys. Delhi managed to get massive, as did the Bahmanis and Gujarat. It's pretty well split out between the major nations in India right now, isn't it? With Delhi definitely coming out on top here. Hey guys, hey, hey, I think we need some ganja from Karakoyunlu, yo. I'm getting my ganja straight from the black sheep man, yo. I guess I'm cool like that, okay? Well, I play you for so I'm not really cool at all. Let's face it. Okay, 90% should be enough to get the stuff that we want to get from them. There you go. We can get that. How about anything else around here? Maybe we can get some of the... Uh, or actually, maybe we can just connect these lands. That's fine. 99% looks okay to me. Can I go for 100? I mean, I'm, I'm not going to be super greedy, right? I'm, I'm going to be fine with 99. For now, boys. For now. Look at that beautiful snake. And that means we can also attack Sindh next and take the province of Tata afterwards from Gujarat. Oh, boy. Yeah, we, we might have... a a little bit more overextension that I'd like to have. Um, let's let's do this mission now. Cradle of Civilization. A scholar of a religious school of choice becomes a permanent resident of the Ottomans, removing the diplomatic relations required to invite the scholar. Enables a decision that allows you to change the scholar with one from another school every 20 years. And we get for a limited time idea and tech cost. Oh my god, this is insanely powerful. Holy snaps, dude. Wow. Okay, so let's see which one are we going to choose here for. The aggressive expansion guide, dev cost, March Merchant plus one legitimacy, shock damage, or shock damage received. I'm gonna go for the extra merchant personally. I think I'm gonna go, yeah. Again, guys, even though it says that if we establish the Ayelet of Persia, it's gonna give us cores on the entire Persian region, it does not do so. So I'm just gonna go for the admin points. It is really frustrating, not gonna lie. I think it's a bug. I'm gonna let PDX know about it because it's not okay for that to still be in the game. But it is what it is. So we're just gonna go through it, okay? Pretend nothing happened. This game is perfectly balanced with no exploits, no bugs nothing of the sorts, all right? I might be overstretching it a little bit here, but I have to do it. I'm gonna piece out these guys first, and I'm gonna take a lot of overextension as consequence. <laughs> it's gotta be done, though, boys. No choice, no way around it. And I'm also gonna be attacking Yemen, since Yemen is expanding like crazy, my boy. I'll give them a little bit of time, though. I'll wait until they siege this down. Maybe with a little bit of luck, they'll fully annex this, so that I can just use the invasion CB after afterwards on them, Ottoman campaign, that is CB, and make them my next Eyalet in the southern tip of uh, the Arabian Peninsula. All that being said, um, I guess I'm gonna have a few years of peace, and by a few I mean probably a couple of months, because I need to be at peace to start doing a few interactions, and also to wait for this overextension to go down a little bit. Hey, there you go, we helped them siege down Sana. now do your peace deal please so I can attack you. Wait, what the F? Sindh has got cores on how many provinces? Whoa, ho, ho. Hold on a second, my boy, because this is prime real estate. I mean, this is literally free real estate for me right now. Looks like we found what was uh, left of Rasids and Najran hiding over in the province of Taiz. They were probably trying to siege down uh, Yemen's capital because Yemen's apparently at war with uh, Ethiopia too. But yeah, I mean, we can do our peace deal at least. Let's go with this one, Buya Snokos. And now let's do the stuff we needed to do at peace so we can start the next war against Sindh. Oh my god, lowering that autonomy feels so... So good. Wait. I just realized. France did not break the alliance with me, even though I didn't give them the provinces they wanted. What? I've been allied to the French this whole time I didn't even realize? This reform's gonna be especially good since we are actually building temples in a lot of non-Sunni provinces, which are heretics, right? So this is gonna give us an extra two unrest in those provinces, plus we need to build those temples for a mission that we have, namely, issue the Kanuname, which is gonna give us the Kanuname event to admin for our leader, and until the death of our leader, reform progress growth and monthly autonomy change so it's a pretty significant event and it's literally just requires that
that we build a few churches here and there. Let's see if we can uh, get the ze province of Tata. We cannot. What? Come on, really? 85, 94? Come on, I need that province, man. I need that province for strategic curry reasons, man. Come on, bro. Give me the province. My favorite part's how they retreated exactly where I was sieging down their fortification. <laughs> oh, now you're willing to give me what I want because I destroyed your army, huh? Eh, hey, hey, I see how it goes. I see how it goes. I'm gonna wait, though, f until the end of the year because I don't want Delhi to join in a coalition, so. And finally, we got the Janissari Infanterie. Actually, I decided to uh, make sure that I cancel all the alliances that Nagaur has so they can get eaten up by somebody else. I hate OPMs all around here, you know? All right, let's get this enforced as well now since we're at it. And with this done, we got the last province. Actually, second last we needed for the Caliphate. We gotta have one more war with the Timurids next. The sons of Jeremy the first. A studious son, a strong son, or an entrepreneurial son. I'm gonna go for the studious boy over here. And in a good Islamic fashion, we're gonna name this guy Andrew. Andrew Osmanoglu. Once more, we will be denouncing the sex practices and enforcing religious impunity. I'm gonna cancel my future vassal's claims on my land, clearly. And there you go, we got Sind, our brand new vassal, with all these amazing cores around everywhere. I had really high hopes for you, Yemen, and you ended up being a one province miner. I mean, like, what the F, bro? <laughs> What the actual F, Yemen? <laughs> Is it even worth it making you right now a freaking ALET anymore? I mean, really. Just so you know, I'm massively disappointed in you, Yemen. I am massively, terribly disappointed in you right now. You had this, bro. You had this. And you screwed it up, man. Looks like Ethiopia's kind enough to give us military access. So that's all that we need to take care of both Medribari and Yemen. World's shortest war ever is over. And we're gonna do establish ALET in Yemen. As well as give me all your money and... And I guess end rivalry. Don't really care about that too much. All right, that's it. Boyas Nokos. Now we can take back all of their cores that they have around here. So we can attack these guys, for example. We take core of Adana. Oh, gotta wait for a few days to get back our diplomat, I guess. And Arrivederci, Adana. It was nice knowing you. Or Aden, sorry, not Adana. Oh, I don't know. My mind was going straight to Adana kebab again. I guess I miss a proper kebab since, you know, it's not many proper kebabs in Japan, sadly. Like, you know, I want one of those juicy ones, like a lamb kebab with that delicious rice and all those vegetables that come side with it. Ooh -hoo. Ah, my mouth is dripping right now. Oh no, again the line of succession thing, bro, for real. So this happens once for every single new heir, I'm assuming. Oh, there goes my two stability boys. Boom, schnokos. Not cool. Not cool at all, bruh. All right, time to give us back our stuff, uh, Ethiopia. You've had it for long enough. No more uh, stealing things from other people, all right? Come on, stop it. Stop it, Ethiopia. Don't make me send you to Brazil or something, all right? Come on, stop doing it. Well, we got another mission done here, which allows us to change the name of the AI led to AI let Yemen changes the country color diplo annexation we get until oh wow that is really good dude holy snaps that's gonna make such a difference in annexing all of our subjects now so we can start annexing them actually oh and by getting spiritual focus now we got the first mission done from the uh branching out missions meaning for the next one we just need to have 45 provinces that have a temple that are not our religion oh wow do i really did i mostly build in my own provinces as in my sunni province i thought i was building in the other ones oh, i made a mistake i need to build more temples in the balkans now oh my lord i'm getting 50 thousand manpower from oh my yes please thank you very much oh that's cool we got an event for Suleiman the magnificent six five six holy snap hold up a sec how much is this guy five six yeah okay no Suleiman is definitely the magnificent one here <laughs> You see what I did there? You see? You see what I did? And you know what else, man? I'm gonna abdicate. I'm gonna let Suleiman take charge because end of the day, Suleiman is a freaking Chad Lord. He's 15. And for the next, what, 40, 50 years, he's gonna give us insane amounts of mana points. And would you look at that? We just integrated Medina. We have so many admin points. It's insane. And I'm honestly 18 freaking years or 15 years ahead of time. I'm gonna be attacking Marrakesh so I can feed my uh, Moroccan Ayelet everything that's left over here and then i'm gonna focus a little bit more on the europeans because i haven't really been paying too much attention to europe to be fair almost at all i still have until 1508 and then i gotta attack the timurids again so we have a good four or five years in which we can focus on venice what's left of the venetians and consolidate the moroccan lands obviously all right let's set uh, meknes as the war target and well we can call in milan why would we ever call in milan oh shit 
I forgot to couple the trade Castile, didn't I? Yep, I did. Now, I could alt F4 to be fair, but I'm lazy and I don't care a little bit about some extra aggressive expansion. Well, in that case, I guess we can uh, focus quickly on Castile, take him out of the war and get a shorter truce. We can just get the two provinces then from them in this war and get the rest in the next one since we want to co-belligerate them. And then I can also focus on Venice because I still have a few provinces I need to take from the Venetians. We have five years and then after five years, we got to go back into the Timurid land so I can do these two wars in the meanwhile. Dude, it's not like the Ottomans are not strong enough as it is. I want the mill points for the... Mor Actually, I want the morale of armies, right? But I really need the diplo points. That's literally the only reason I'm selecting the naval reforms because of the naval... because uh, of the diplo points. And also, my armies are just ridiculously strong as it is. Even without the 20% extra morale of armies, it it's not going to make any sort of a difference really to be realistic here. Now, let's make sure we transfer all of these provinces to our Moroccan ALS so we can start piecing out nations. We do have have to move ourselves into Songhai lands for a little bit here because they're not going to give us the two provinces we want from them until we start sieging a few of their ports I guess maybe their capital even which uh, is in Gao so it's actually fairly close the real question now is do we do this mission or do we wait for a leader which is going to have less than six uh, admin points I think I'm going to do it simply because my leader right now is insanely young he is what 16 17 years old Suleiman the Magnificent and I'm going to get this modifier reform progress growth until his death which is likely gonna be in say I don't know 50 years or something we're getting 200 admin points as well so um I have nothing I can do with admin points except maybe deva provinces deving up admin moment okay here's the thing guys I'm quickly realizing that my old playstyle and my chill playstyle is lagging behind I'm literally saying I would be able to expand as the Ottomans five to six times faster than I am right now I didn't start the playthrough in mind with having all of these insane abilities and having all of the like i've been crushing people left and right and i haven't even been feeling it i'm getting almost no rebels because of the minus 10 unrest from the pasha licks i'm getting tons of mana points more than i even know what to do with i'm getting nations conquered left and right super easily with the alets this nation is just insanely overpowered holy mother of god convert the Hagia sophia into a mosque it's gonna change the development level of the monument by one. Oh hell yeah i'm gonna let that happen then there you go boys level two now and it gives even more tolerance of heretics which is just fitting right now you know what i feel like we can definitely afford a few barrages considering we're uh chilling at a cool 1000 mil mana pretty much all the time here and let's also assaultius maximus dariago now we can peace out songhai and i'm gonna be taking tuat for myself directly i'm not gonna give it to my uh alet oh actually wait i cannot core it can i so yeah i should have taken saura as well forgot about saura well, I mean, I can take it from the Mamluks. There you go. I can from the Moroccans. I can take somewhere once the piece is done. Abdullah Kemankesh. Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. Totally heard about this random dude that popped out in the event. Obviously, everybody's heard of him. He's really famous in Turkey nowadays, right? Turkish people in the chat, you know about Abdullah, right? A Sultan in Timbuktu. Um, yeah, sure. Oh, you guys want to see something also really ridiculous? Check out my army tradition, 99.8. And it's barely going down. It's almost always at around 99 point something because of the amount of battles that I've been continuously having. And you want to see something else even ridiculous? Check this out. It costs me 167 to get Diplotech 9. Look at why. Control over City of Learning, Islamic Center of Learning, Golden Age, Innovativeness, Demi Bonus, Legalism, Trading Investment, Naval reform ideas diplomatic core I <laughs> If I was to embrace colonialism now, so if I say spawned in colonialism, I would be paying like, what, 120 for one technology? It's just mind-blowing, dude. I feel like the Ottomans are way more strong than they should be at this point. Like, I was gonna fight off the decadence mechanic and stuff, but I'm not even getting any decadence yet. I know, that's gonna happen a little bit later, 15, 50s and afterwards. But still, these guys are way too powerful. And I do realize, considering this video is starting to become extremely long, that I'm probably gonna need to do it third and final part for this campaign all the way into the 1600 so we can show the decadence if we get 8,000 likes in the first week after this comes out. I really want to see you guys interested in a third and final part or not. Alright, now let's kill off what's left of the Georgian separatists here. I'm sorry, what? Every owned province gains minus 10 local autonomy. Oh, come on. Co really? I mean, I'm not complaining. I'm not complaining. This is not me complaining. Shibi shibi yai, shibi yo, shibi yo. Skibi dibi Boo. 
That's how the song went, right? That's 100% how the song went, right? Hate aggressive expansion for basically taking all of Morocco. Hot dangity dong da boom 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 jigonga dong. All right, let's do the Moroccan mission. Protect Morocco until the end of the game. We get naval force limit plus 10% and we turn them into a core aolet as well as we get 100 diplo power. Permanent claim on the Maghreb region is a little bit redundant because normally you would have all of the Maghreb by the point at which you reach Morocco, right? So I don't see that being a really important thing to get but hey all right now let's seize this thank you very much broski that was very kind of you now we can core this stuff up and we can also expand into the rich gold mine areas of songhai so apparently the truce with these guys is expiring in 1507 that means we're gonna have to fight both the timurids and the venetians at the same time it's not a big deal they're still on military tech 6 and i did pay a little bit extra but i am on military tech 10 now <laughs> so i'm basically 24 years ahead of time i cannot even begin to express how stupid this run is for me right now pretty intense when you can call bohemia france and milan in your war against venice i mean obviously i don't need any of these so i'm not gonna call any but it's just saying i could if i wanted to right i'm gonna call the knights however because i will be um I'll be wiping them out also. We're going on an adventure to siege down the Timurids because they said I smell... Wait, what? Only 28 days to take roads. Yep, I did assault that again. I am of the have too much mana points. That's, that's, that's what's up. All right, so you guys get out of here. I don't want to see you around my face. Deposing the nightly scourge. Oh, there's an event for this now. Local trade power plus 15%. Monthly devastation. Local prosperity. Provinces get protected from raids. Wow. Every province that was affected by coastal raid will receive this. Hot damn, that is really good. Let's get these boys over to Crete next. And check this out. We're gonna be uh, sending our units. And we're gonna be disembarking straight in the fortification that is getting besieged now. Which means that these units here are going to get stack and Vapenicorum. Because they've got no else to hide from us they cannot get off the island from here so even if they retreat in uh, palermo no they didn't even retreat they, they they just disappeared there you go exactly what i was saying let's continue our carpeticus sigicus in the eastern parts of the realms i feel like timurids with a tint of green looks way better than it did before doesn't it i don't think i remember the last time i seen kiva appear on the map they have one province. They have any cores around? They have a few cores over here, obviously, because they start with them. But it's really rare to see Kiva nowadays. In the earlier patches of EU4, you could see Kiva a lot more, though, to be fair. You've had the Balkan provinces for far too long, Venice. They are now mine. And I got colonialism in Girid. I don't know where Girid is, but I'm guessing it's one of the Venetian provinces I just took. All right, let's get the biggest snakes over into the uh, Timuridus. And now we can enact the decision, unify Islam, which turns us into the caliphate and we get until the end of the game a few modifiers that will help us out a little bit as well as we get the caliphate government reform which we could go for but obviously i'm gonna keep the ottoman government reform which is way better than the caliphate one but that being said i don't want to make this too long so i'm gonna finish the second bit of this campaign here and once we get the light goal i'll release the next bit so you know what you need to do and until the next time check out this amazing france video and i want to give a massive thank you to all of my patrons channel members and twitch subscribers i would not be able to do this without all your support.